All right, all right, all right, guys. It is what is it? April twelfth. It is Easter Sunday, guys. This is episode seven of Young Blood Podcast. We have made it here, guys. Somehow, some way. Um, I don't know how, but we did. We made it. We made it to uh, seven episodes. Our last episode was with uh, Colby Waddell. I hope if you guys did check in with that one, you enjoyed it. Um, and if you didn't, please do go check it out. Uh, today we have a long time friend. It's kind of been a uh, um, a pattern I've had clearly having people I know on here. And DeAndre is by far my longest friend. Thank you for I've having had, me, bro. Yeah, that I've had on uh, the podcast so far. Um, a couple things I want to get started with before we get into the show. Um, I do want to give a shout out to Cassidy Neighbors. Uh, she she was the um, artiste behind my album artwork. She kicked ass. I paid her to um, design a whole album cover. She's working on my YouTube two page for me. Um, so I'll leave her Instagram in the description. But uh, she does calligraphy. She does all kinds of things. She she went to school for uh, graphic design. So uh, if anybody's interested in getting something designed for them, if you have a business. Um, anything like that, give her a shout out, uh, give her a call, do whatever you need to do. Uh, again, I'll put her Instagram in the description. It's Cassidy uh, Collarin, right? Yeah. Her married name. Yeah, Cassidy her married Cullerin. name. I'm an asshole. I, 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 I don't know how to pronounce the second name, so I was like not trying to butcher it on the podcast, so I just went with what I knew how to say. <laughs> um, to be honest. She painted the sign of Victory Greens, too, where I work. Oh no shit! So she's entrance oh, sign. Yeah, dude. she's been painting. She's been doing work for us. That so, is yeah. actually pretty ironic. I didn't. I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh, dude, much better. Our sound quality was a little bit intense there. Sorry, guys. We're getting getting into the podcast here. We're still getting everything adjusted. Uh, again, so yeah, this is episode number seven. Um, and today I kind of we've been really focused a lot of about the coronavirus and talking about that shit for for weeks now. Um, and one thing I can say is I'm really fucking tired of the social distancing shit. Right. Like, I, I'm, I know everybody's still, like, especially in Idaho this time of year, it's, it's a very, um, fucking. Be, out, be outside vibe. Yeah, Be man, around people this, vibe, yeah. Do you have a fighter on you? I do not. Uh, it's a very much a be outside vibe, bro. All right. And I noticed that when I went to the park, Especially because I know you go to Camel's back a ton. But even with the coronavirus going on, I've noticed people just congregating there. Yeah. And it makes me, like, kind of curious how busy it would be if people weren't. Or if it wasn't, like, a pandemic right now. If people weren't staying at home. If, like, right. It gets especially, back. especially this past week, it was so nice every day. It was, like, in the 60s or whatever, you know, in the afternoon. So every day I go out down there, you see people kind of you know they want to be out and about but it's like it's almost you know i was talking to my brother about it last night uh i asked him about the whole situation how it is down there and i was just kind of telling him how it sucks to be here because people aren't respecting it as much anymore because of the weather um it we have a harder time keeping indoors when it's nice outside like this especially right. when this pandemic's been going on like in california this weather has been like this for weeks months you know so there's yeah. no change and for us we just basically got fucking sunlight good weather right? yeah so we're all exactly. out here like you know fuck a pandemic the sunlight's so yeah. nice that i might be uh chancing getting sick and i don't give a fuck like i'm gonna go outside and we're blessed here too because it's not even as bad like as far as you know staying in the house like we're not we're not getting fined if we're outside walking i mean other places have a strict curfew and stuff so i feel like idaho as far as the quarantine and how strict it is and how the shutdowns are it's definitely definitely not as bad as it is and you know you have family in california i have family in illinois near chicago and it's just they're they've been in the house for a whole month and so yeah they're, they're used to it well i guess chicago might be going through the same thing because their weather's probably starting to get nice too right. you know so it's all of us people up in the northwest we're like fuck yeah, man yeah. like just going stir crazy in your house yeah yeah Cause I know for a fact I am. I'm fucking. I'm getting real tired of this shit, man. Like I personally just. Especially today is like Easter Sunday. That's like the first, um, you know, spring thing that people do outside. They dress, you know, nice colors and go 
go to church, go see their family, and you can't even go out to eat. You can't go to church. So that's it's the like, worst part, too. I actually, I, I did kind of something. I hate to admit that I did this, but this week I was, uh, when I just got off work, there was a bar right by my um, job site that was doing to-go cocktails. And so I went and got a to-go beer, and I sat on their patio in the sunlight and sat to drink a beer at a bar. Was it Mode? Mode? No, Mode? Mo- no? Mode's oh, okay. doing to-go cocktails right now. They're doing, like, a to-go thing where they have, like, this space bag. They fucking bring it out to your car. Yeah. You can drive home with it, and then you can make your cocktail at home. Uh, they oh, okay. put, like, ice and stuff in it. I saw it on Instagram yesterday. That's cool. Yeah, it's a super cool thing. I actually, I, I've never even been to the Mode, and, like, and being somebody who's super big on, like, bar scene downtown like that's surprising to say but I, I have nothing against the mode it's just not my my scene uh i go to amsterdam personally but i hear the mode has really good cocktails all that yeah, I don't think tyler over there does a really good job uh he's won a few cocktail competitions too um doing all kinds of uh cocktail competitions for them he, he man he's the manager over there tyler is. okay um all i know is it's gonna be a it's gonna be a crazy summer though once this you know once if quarantine actually comes to an end in a good timing or whatever that first weekend that first weekend that first the weekend. first month of weekends <laughs> it's, they're gonna have a short it's funny because the fact that nobody's bartending right now that when they do open back up they're gonna have a shortage of bartenders you think so oh fuck yeah dude because all of us are, are gonna have jobs by then yeah different something shit. you know and all the ones that all the ones that do have available to go back to work like Who's to say that they're going to go back? They might just be like, well, you know, what if the coronavirus comes back? I don't want... Like, there's going to be a lot of people veered away from the bartending scene, yeah, I yeah. feel, after this. Like, yeah. Because it's only diehards and people that bartend for a living that are going to stay into it. People who have other options are going to go that go route. Go with those other options, yeah. exactly, yep. So, DeAndre, you've got you've got a pair of shoes sitting on my counter right now on my, on my table. Um, tell me why you have a pair of shoes. What is this pair of shoes? I know absolutely nothing about it, and this is also why I'm having you on here. Right. Anna said the same thing. Anna Wait, she was in my uh, second episode of this of this uh, Young Blood podcast. Uh, she and I were joking and said mainly she was giving me shit. And so a lot of guys don't have style when it comes to their shoes, and a lot of guys don't have style at all. You know, and she she was pointing that out, and I even was like, "Yeah, I'm fucking guilty." <laughs> right. Like, I'm fucking guilty of that, of all people. <laughs> um, and then you came up in conversation, and I was like, "Yeah," and DeAndre is gonna come on and kind of talk about his uh, his shoe game, what he's got going on with that. Okay, so yeah, so so this shoe in particular is kind of a collector's piece, in my opinion. Um, it's called the Jordan Jordan One Varsity Red. Some people call it. I call it the Reverse Bread because the original Jordan One colorway was kind of reverse, where the red is the black was, and where the black is the red was in '85 when they came out the Jordan One band. So this one is just kind of something they did in 2020. They came out with this. It has the original Jordan One tag right here. It kind of describes the shoe. So yeah. It's a collector's piece. It retailed for two hundred dollars, and right now the market on it is like for that size twelve. It's like five twenty-five for like a size Holy nine. Holy shit! So how much did you pay for that pair of shoes? Those ones retail, so I got I got lucky on those and got them. They released one morning like on the Nike sneakers app, and then they probably sold out, you know, in seconds. And I got lucky enough to get one retail, and then I got a couple of other pairs too, but. So do you make enough to make a living just off of selling shoes almost? So me, I I mean, I could, but I don't. I personally like to keep a job, too, just for, you know, times like this, shoe sales are kind of slower just because right. people are they probably were, uncomfortable with their money. But some some people, like, you know, are probably bored, so they're online shopping a little bit. But Would you say it was booming right before this happened, though? Yeah, it was kind of, I don't know, 2020 has been a weird year for it in general, just because January was just kind of right. weak as far as the shoes that were coming out. And, and then February, like, there was a lot of hot shoes that came out during All-Star Weekend. And then directly after that is, you know, when Corona when Corona hit hard, so it canceled, like, Sneaker Con, Phoenix. What and is then, what is Sneaker Con? So Sneaker Con is just basically, like, it's just like a nerd, it's just, you know, like a nerd shoe event basically you just go buy sell trade sneakers clothing it's for other guys like you like, like to make money off of selling shoes yeah you know like it's or just a community just though like, or... yeah so i've always been into you know like just like shoes and fashion i guess so i was just spending too much money on it so that's why i started summit woods really because right. i was like dang like you and know. what's what's summit woods 
that's my Instagram, which where it's like my Instagram platform where I sell and do some trading, like mostly local stuff. So you you, you have an Instagram page where you're, you actually do all this work, or like you, you do a lot of the yeah. selling, you do all of that. And yeah, like the pictures, was, you know, like yeah. Fuck, dude. Well, I see, I see. Uh, you've been doing this for a few years, and that's why I wanted to have you on because, like, first of all, I'm not the kind of person that's gonna go out and buy a sh pair of shoes for anything over a hundred bucks. Period. Right, and, and a lot of people are like that, yeah. And it's funny because. I, I need to be like that more, especially with how people are nowadays. Like, even if it's just something like a pair of fucking Nike SBs or something more simple, like, I need to step it up for more than just a pair of bands. Right. Um, for being somebody who doesn't know anything about Jordans, who doesn't rock fucking any kind of basketball, who doesn't even play basketball. So I can't, I can't talk about the shoe when I do wear the shoe. And somebody mm -hmm. goes, like, oh, dude, that's a dope shoe. You know, so I can't rock it, and I can't have pride behind it. What's a good shoe for somebody like me to, to wear? That's just, like, a good basis, fucking well-respected, well-rounded style. So, so right now, I mean, if you want to be, like, up on me, I just I just am into it because of, like, really probably the movie Space Jam, you know? Like, that's where, right. like, a lot of kids, probably 25-year-olds back in the day, you know, in the 90s, that's what it was. Michael Jordan was still, you know, and then... So that's what that's what got me into like sneakers and fashion probably and then like my dad was always into it and so I've always just had like a passion for that. But for a lot of different people, I mean when Nike started making SBs skateboarding, that was huge too, you know, like when they when they merged with that and started doing the SBs, the SB dunks. So right now like in style dunks are coming back huge in 2020 right. like and so if you like that, that's a classic style. Anybody can wear dunks, you know, like they have so many different options for so many different styles, you know? I mean, I still don't even know what a pair of dunks looks like. So I'm going to have to do a little post-production Do a little here. research, yeah. I'm going to have to do a little, little post-production here, and then uh, I'll, I'll try to put a link in the tab or something, or just fucking buy a pair of the yeah. shoes. <laughs> I mean, you know, you know what Air Force Ones look like? Air Force Ones, yeah. anybody can yeah. wear a pair of white Air Force Ones, especially this time of year. Or There's I so mean, many different types of shoes, you know? When you really, it's like a whole, it's like a whole different world, like a whole different, there's probably just as many, um, shoe brands with collaborations, different people that have, you know, whether it be music artists, um, actual artists, painters, such and such, right, that have collaborated with brands, athletes, you know, different colors of different, there's probably, you know, there's hundreds of colors of Jordan 1s and then 2s, 3s, and so... And then Nike, same thing, you know, there's Air Force Ones, there's foam posits, there's dunks, there's so many different types of shoes. I think that's probably Thousands. why you can get away with, like, making a whole business just based around buying and selling shoes. Right. Uh, how many how many pairs of shoes do you think you own? Um. Well, right now, probably, like, in my personal collection, I don't know, it's 20 to 30 just because I, like, to start Summit Woods, I just got rid of a lot of my collection, but... So yeah, probably. And these are all like 30. in the box, fucking. Yeah, like they're most of them. Yeah, and of course I have Vans too. Like I have, I have my beater Vans. You know, my beater, uh, my running shoes and workout shoes and stuff. But yeah. How long have you been doing this for? Um, well, you remember when I worked at Champs? <coughs> you like nineteen oh, twenty. Shit, like, dude. So I started collecting like heavy when I worked at the mall at Champs, and I just you know like I had a discount, so I'd go to Chicago and. Buy, I was just always buying shoes every weekend, and then I started when selling cars. Work, when did you work at Champs? That was like, what year? So it's 2020, probably, man. That makes a lot like of sense. Like 2014, that, that 2015. That explains why you got so into it, too, because yeah, you had to know your shit about the shoes. I was around all the time, every to, day. Yep. To be a sales rep there. Right. Fuck, I didn't even think about that. Okay, yeah. so that's a little background. And then there's, there's Facebook groups. Um, A lot of people are probably in 208 Kicks. But back then it was like Treasure Valley Sneakerheads. It was different, and there was a different one. And uh, yeah, so I was in those, and I would I would like wear shoes sometimes, and then flip it or whatever if I get sick of it. Right. Like I've always done that with like clothes and stuff, just in, keep different stuff How in do you rotation. Keep them so so fresh, like without creasing them and shit. You just have to step differently. <laughs> you just have to step different. I don't know. You're when really, I was a little kid, I, I guess my mom said I wouldn't like to play in the grass if I had, like, white sneakers on, so I've always just been maybe careful about it. Really? Like, you straight... Yeah. Even as a kid, you'd be like yeah. that? Bro. I wasn't playing around, yeah. 
So, and then they have sneaker, they have shoe cleaners too. Some people are better, better about it than others, you know. But they, right. have ni- they have nice sneaker cleaners. You well, because I've seen shit on like <clears throat> fucking TikTok and Instagram and s- stuff. Uh, there's this one video of some girl uh, putting her putting her man's fucking shoes on. She's like, when your man pisses you off and you crease his shoes. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I can't relate. You know what I mean? Right. I, I was like, I don't have any yeah. fucking shoes that she can go crease. And I was like. I wonder how DeAndre would feel if this yeah. girl and fucking went, always, his, went in his closet no, and started creasing his not, shoes. Like, definitely, that would probably never happen. Cause, <laughs> <you know? laughs> um, no. But there's always those memes of, like, dudes engaging, getting engaged, you know, and he has the shoe off, like, just sitting next to him because he doesn't right. want to crease it with the toe. Right. And, like, oh, my yeah. God. But there's also the, the dudes who, you know, because some shoes are super limited, super hyped up. Like your Travis Scotts or whatever. Yeah, like they know, and there's some people that are just that's the only pair of dip them in I paint know. or just do crazy things to them to you know for clout or hype or whatever you want to call it, attention really. Just so you are also change things up a little bit. You're an essential employee right now. You're you're doing landscaping. Right. Um, do you kind of feel like being in the workforce right now? Do you feel like this is putting yourself in danger like going to work every day do you feel like with what you do it's safe like how do you feel about that well with what i do i feel like it's safe because i'm not i'm not in contact with people like that close i just go to someone's um someone's door at their home like you know we we call them first we let them know they're on their way i just plant okay i just plant trees too so it's not like it's not like i'm doing a bunch of extra you know we're just going there to plant the trees that they bought already right so they know we're coming let them know Hi, nice to meet you from from the social right, distance. And then, yeah. an truck and then they show us. Usually, they have the part marked or wherever where they want it. And so, okay. so yeah, I don't feel I don't feel too in danger about it. It's nice to get out of the house. That's it's a, the weirdest it's a blessing part. I, I, I'm still going to work every day. Um, my job has been kind of stressful though because like I straight walk in. You're and in out. someone's house. I'm in you're somebody's in someone's house. house and right. the, the house I'm working for right now is actually a Mormon family with like seven or eight kids, and they're all in high school. So, okay. yeah, they're not, like, young where they don't go anywhere. All the, they're all in high they're school, people, and maybe, they live right yeah. next to Camel's Back Park. And okay. they're this big Mormon family with, like, 900 bikes, you know. Right. And all they do is they go ride on the green belt and stuff, you know. So and I'm you, going in and out of their house you're, all day. You're in there masked up or... Yeah. Yeah, I assume, yeah. of course. Yeah. yeah, like, and what I do is because I take Uber to work and stuff like that, and, like, out of courtesy to the Uber driver, I'll straight up wear a fucking mask and Uber, like, and... That's one thing, like, there's all this stupid fucking shit out there right now that's saying masks don't do anything. And even the homemade masks, that's the thing. Like, people are like, oh, masks don't do anything. Masks don't do anything. False. If you're fucking wearing a mask, I'm wearing a fucking mask. Everybody's wearing a fucking mask. That's two more fucking barriers that are providing yourself with protection. And that other person with protection. And... Not necessarily is it protecting you from getting it, but it's protecting you from spreading it. And that's what the fucking important thing is right now, is not spreading it to other people. Because it's not about you. It's not about you getting sick. It's not about you being healthy. It's about that person who's been doing everything in their fucking power not to get sick, who has to walk to the grocery store, 90 years fucking old, but still has yeah. to go do it. That's that's the most important thing. Yeah, I think, and like the elderly, that's about the elderly yeah. people, like the people above a certain age, because people our age, you know, like under, especially under thirty, you know, like fifteen to thirty, like strong, like yeah. you know, they say it, it affects kids a little bit, like younger yeah, babies so and kids. But fact of the matter, like if you have a homemade mask, and people are telling you it doesn't do anything, tell them to go fuck themselves. Like that is just, <laughs> <laughs> like that is just absolutely wrong. It may it may not be as effective as the medical grade N95 whatever, but you know people are saying what can I do right now? What what is something I can do? That's fucking one thing. One thing you can actually physically do to protect yourself and those around you and actually participate in helping this situation is wear a fucking mask. Yeah, you know and. And, I didn't know about and that. And trying to stay home, too. I mean, it's hard, but, like... Yeah, it's really I try hard. not to go where there's going to be multiple... I mean, Camel's Back is such a big... It's a big <laughs> no, area. It's a big know. issue. They need to close it. Oh, you think so? I think they need to close it. I think mm-hmm. they... I, w- I 100% because I, I went there. I, I wouldn't have fucking went there if it wasn't closed. You know? But, like, yeah, I mean, it's... it's It 
bro, there is fucking cars down the, like, lined up down the street of people just going there. If you want to go for a hike, go out of the city and do it, you know? Like, mm-hmm. don't close all, don't say it's illegal to go hike. Close all the in-city public areas. Yeah. Period. Close them the fuck down. Because why Why are you going to close down the government? Why, like, or the court system and shit? Why are you going to tell people they can't go to work? You're, you're going to do all this effort. You're going to close all this shit down, but not follow through with one another small thing that really would actually make a difference. Like, yeah. Well, I don't think people are that close to each other, though, in and outside. Bro, I saw so. a motherfucker at the park with his shirt off using the gym at Camel's back. Yeah. With the caution tape. They're caught. It's caution yeah. tape off. He was, he was. On top of the caution tape, on top of the bench, like, fucking fuck it, dude. And I'm like, dude, you're a fucking douchebag. Like, <laughs> you fucking yeah. douchebag. And it was it was mainly because, like, I would have even said something to the guy, but he was the kind of dude that he was fucking stacked. And, oh, sorry, guys. And he had a big-ass dog, mm-hmm. you know, that was off-leash, just sitting there watching him work out, like, Idaho, fucking though, say something to me. In you know? Idaho, though, how many, uh, do we, we don't have that many cases, though. Uh, but we don't not. I mean, of yeah, compared to I mean, if we were in New York, like New, I mean, I don't know. I see what yeah, you're saying. Yeah, New York's the epic. I don't know, man. It's just I I saw something. Fuck yesterday. coronavirus. Yeah, fuck sick of talking about it. I well, it's what sucks because that's all there is to talk about right now. Yeah. I mean, like I I'm sure Tinder has seen an absolute spike in everything <laughs> in traffic. People and, are bored. Oh, people, people are. People are definitely bored. Yeah. I'm bored. I'm so bored. Hell, I've got this is this is by far the most eventful thing that I have done all week. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking a! I cleaned my house yesterday. That was cool. Like I still yeah, I'm going to work and stuff though. But like it sucks going to work to just come home and have to stay home when you can chill at home. You know when you're like fuck, dude. I don't want to yeah. go out tonight. That's Everything's nice. always easier when you have when you want to do it, right? Yeah. You know when you wanna. When like, you want to make a change or a shift, it's way easier, and then you have to, when you're almost forced to do something, we're like, you know, almost just in our houses, so. Nobody likes to be told they can hey, Nobody likes to be told what to do, exactly. I mean, remember the fucking parties that we used to have at your crib back in the day, dude? Yeah, like the high school, back in the high school parties. Yeah, yeah. you know why half the kids would go to those parties? Because they were in high school and they couldn't party. And it was yeah. something you weren't supposed to do. You know what I mean? Of so, course. Like, that's what it feels yeah. like right now. And then when now. you turn 21, all of a sudden there's less house parties. Like you Yeah. Know. Right. And I was watching my buddy Clay's Snapchat last night. And he's actually working at the bars right now doing um, some renovations while they're closed. Okay. Um, and so he took a stroll last night around downtown Boise on a Saturday night at uh, mm-hmm. 1130 at night. Prime time. Mm-hmm. Dead. It's so crazy to see. There wasn't. Yeah. There wasn't even a car. Like yeah. not even a. It's crazy. Like I was expecting. Like I was expecting not seeing people. Like okay, cool. Cars though. Like not even a fucking car was driving downtown at eleven o'clock on yeah. Saturday night. And see, I think that's the most important thing. Like the nightlife. There's no. There's not a bunch of. There's not groups of people right. in close quarters like that. Like. People, people hiking, usually I don't come in within, you know, four or five feet. If I'm passing someone on the same trail, it's like a quick, like, you know, and I go off to the side or whatever, but That's what I the do. downtown thing is definitely stopping the curve. Like, the restaurant thing is Making definitely... Making an impact. The restaurants, it's, everything's like drive through you know, and so it has to, it has to eventually... I, I, slow I feel down like what they should know. do is they should make a, um, mandatory or not a mandatory but they should make the antibody test more readily available because there is a test that um what it does is it tests the antibodies of whether or not you've had the coronavirus in the past so it can tell if you had it and recovered and if you have those antibodies that your body's developed to fight the coronavirus and it tells you you're basically immune to the coronavirus for up to a year could be a fucking two weeks could be up to a year mm-hmm. but you're immune for a little bit you got mm-hmm. it you kicked it off you know um but they they have these tests that tell you whether or not you have or have not had it and the, the craziest thing to me is when my dad did get his test granted he was not a high priority he wasn't somebody that was in the hospital for coronavirus symptoms he was just in the hospital because he went to the hospital um but that being said it took fucking 10 days to get his test back right 
You know, and that's a long fucking time. Yeah, the whole, the whole, even how, like, you can't, ju- the whole system on how people can get tested or can't get tested, how long it takes, whether you have a certain amount of money and your testing situation is different because of that is just, you know, bullshit. Because. Do you, you do know, you know like, anybody who's gotten it personally? Who's gotten a positive test? Who's been, yeah, who's, who's Who, gotten no, the No, but I, I mean, I think. Before it was like a big, big issue. Like I was in Chicago during All Star Weekend, and I I got sick, with like similar symptoms, and so. But I was only sick for a few days, you know. Like I don't, I have a pretty strong immune oh, system. Oh, when you were in Chicago, you yeah. kind of got the cold. You got a cold or whatever. Like whatever? a flu, like a bad. Yeah, like I was really? sick. I was ill. Yeah. And that was right. That was before. February fourteenth, like Fuck, through right, like right. March first. Fucking right. Yeah. That was right before this so whole thing was shut right. down. So, yeah. Do but you, I generally don't do get sick. Do you think it was anywhere. here already then? In the United States? Yeah. It definitely was. Like, full on. Like, How could it not be? Chicago. People travel. You know, like, the uh, coronavirus, you've been hearing about it since when? January, if you've been true. paying attention. Well, the first December. case was when? In fucking, like, October, November? Or yeah, shit? it's been around, so, I mean. That's crazy. So, from, from ground zero, case one, uh, to now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fuck, dude. It was like, just crazy, too, how the United States cases went up so fast, oh, so, you know. So quick. Like, it literally, I, I was watching a meme where there was the, the rate of which uh, all the countries had their cases confirmed and shit, and there was Italy just right in front, and, and then Spain. Spain, yeah, and then we France, just we just come and then up. L.A., our fucking America just yeah. like, Meh! Well, it's because New York, like, they have they have more cases themselves than, uh, I think, Spain now, or Italy, like, the most. Really? Like, New York themselves, yeah. Really? Mm-hmm. I have only met, so, so far, when Colby came on yesterday, he said he's known four people who pers- personally have had it. Mm-hmm. Um, I know one person, who, like, personally who got it, and that's of somebody who's t- told me you know, I could know fucking 20 people, and they just didn't let anybody else. Yeah, know. that's the crazy thing. You could be walking around, and you don't know, you know, like, but... You don't know, you know? I mean, the thing is, dude, it's... I've said this once, and, it was at a, and I'll say it again. This is, this is something nobody in our generation has ever experienced. It's nobody in our parents' generation has ever experienced. This is all new. This is all fucking weird. And personally, I was super down with it for the first couple of weeks, and I'm getting to a point where, like, it, I'm starting to pull my hair out, you know? <laughs> like, literally, yeah. but fuck, man. I'm sitting here at night, because I live alone, and the first half of the, the first part of this quarantine, I was staying at my parents' house, and that was cool just to get some company, but dude, no, I, I only, you can only stay with your parents for so fucking long. Right. You know, and like, it, it was all fun, but I was like, alright, it's time to go fucking home. This quarantine's ran a month long now, you know? And, so I was like, all right, cool, you know, so in my head, I kind of had a sense like this all was over, like I was going back to my house and, you know, I can go to the bar this weekend and get a drink if I wanted to or something. No, yeah. yeah. No, it's not. It is not all over. It's all the same fucking... Well, though, they extended it, too, till like, May 15th in California, so... Well, how's the whole eviction thing work? Like, I know, I, I don't know the exact law, but, like, does that mean, like, we just... They can't evict anybody until this I is over? I have no idea. Like, With bills and stuff, I have no idea. Like, I haven't... I've been working, so it's not... Like, thankfully, it's not affecting me probably as much. Right. I haven't even really worried about a stupid but track. I've just been just, trying to work. It's just, like, how can you... It's a pandemic, right? Like, it's a whole... It's a whole situation for the world. Like, it's not just right. certain people are affected. You no, know, like, we're all affected. So, I don't think people can really just kick people to the curb and make it worse as a whole you know what what is gonna happen if the homeless population just spikes and then people are just out there getting sick and then you know it's a whole Dude, they were talking about situation. In joe rogan's podcast actually about the homeless uh, they were finding fucking like medieval diseases in the homeless population in like los angeles and new york and shit like diseases that hadn't been around since the fucking medieval times bro like, Isn't that it's like just plague, like plague? Type. <laughs> yeah, yeah, bro, like straight fucking plague, like shit. Yeah, I mean, I believe it because they live different. You know, it's your hygiene is so limited, probably, and then you know, it's just that's what's really important too, man. Like, what else you can do right now to kind of help this the whole virus is just like be healthy, keep your immune system yeah, up, take course, your fucking yeah. vitamins, go work out. 
Like, me, I'm the kind of person, like, I drink pretty fucking heavy. But even, with, like, in the midst of this whole coronavirus thing, I've cut my drinking back, like, a hundredfold. Just, like, I... I'll have Shit, a beer you're the there. one. You're the one person because I feel like everybody's just been drinking more. Exactly. <laughs> on dude. my social media, and so I just see people I've, taking drinks. I've cut shots, back because I was drinking before. Drinking, oh, drinking, shit, like, before yeah. this, and to me, this was a reason not to drink. I was like, yeah. All right, cool. Well, fuck. I mean, it's uh, because if I was already drinking heavy before, just well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like if I was already drinking heavy before, then this this was every reason in the world to not start to drink more. more. more <laughs> yeah. <facts>. yeah <laughs> And actually, that's something, uh, I, what are you doing to stay in shape right now with the gyms being closed? Like, that's one thing that me and you kind of been running around and shit in our heads trying to fucking figure out a plan on, like, going to go run or do something, but everybody's got, got their own fucking thing going on as far as working out. Well, uh, you're not gonna like that I say this, but no. I go to Camel's back and just run, like, honestly. <laughs> like, every other day or every day. And then work, like, at work is, I try to, like do some workouts at work sometimes you know like, oh, i saw that on your instagram yeah. you're lifting lifting your shit yeah and then um i have like a pull-up bar at the house so i can do different types of pull-ups and push-ups obviously and just you know at home workouts is just the thing right now i need to order some weights that's what, what i need to do next, what i think i'm gonna take up stuff. doing is i downloaded this app um i haven't started doing it yet but I just downloaded it, and it's a it's a boxing app. And so what have you been doing? So that's, far? that's 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 about to tell you. Um, I downloaded this app now that I'm back in my house. Um, I'm gonna start doing nightly shadow boxing. Okay. As my cardio to try to get fucking in, just to do something, you know. Because right. if I can't lift, I might as well get my cardio up. You know right. What I mean? And start doing like daily challenges to myself. Like I'm finding fucking ways. But yeah, I downloaded this app. Maybe you should download this app too, and you can track your progress on it. And it just teaches you how to box. It's just a fucking, and it's a personal app. You don't have to do it in a group. Put the fucking TV on and do an hour of fucking shadow boxing. And it teaches you combos and shit while you're sitting there. And just, I don't know if it's a paid app, but like it, it was free when I downloaded it. But like I think after the first workout, that's when they start getting you on that fucking pay to play. Right. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> you know, of course. But that's that's my fucking idea. Okay. Is I think I'm gonna pick up some kind of fighting or, or something. Yeah, I follow this dude on Instagram. I like his workouts. Um, I think it's Brian DaCosta, or DaCosta. I don't know. He's, uh, like he's the isn't he fucking uh, 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 Kevin Hart's fitness trainer? No. Do you follow that guy? Mm -mm. It's not that same guy though. You know who I'm talking about. Yeah, right? I know who you're that guy's about. fucking. I don't know dope. that guy's He's name, cool. but yeah. He's a cool guy. But he he shows like all types of um, at home workouts and stuff. I'm actually so. gonna pull him up and give him a shout out because his videos are super fucking rad. Um, dude, oh, fuck, what's his name, bro? It sucks being the guy that's known as like somebody's trainer. You know what I mean? Like, he's not known as, oh, that really badass trainer from L.A. Like, oh, that guy who trains Kevin Hart? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, that guy who trains Kevin Hart, that's, like, his, like, best... Like, they're friends, actually, too, though. I like, think they're sure. friends through that, though. They, they He's been his trainer for, like, seven years, but that's where they met. It was through through professional training like yeah, it was his, his workout training I don't know if that's a fact I, I, I don't fucking quote me on it yeah, <laughs> I don't know if that's a fact <laughs> like don't fucking quote me on it but I, I didn't even know the guy's name so to, to say that I know exactly how he knows Kevin Hart isn't exactly uh, yeah. <laughs> a valid argument on my end there um, it would be sweet to have that type of money too, like the Kevin Hart or whatever money, to just be able to have a sick ass quarantine. Oh, well, you house. know, I have a bank account, and you see, <laughs> <laughs> I got another bank account. <laughs> the Kevin Hart money, and that's that's but, probably one of my favorite bit. That'd be his. crazy to have a basketball court at the house and a pool at the house, and dude, I was doing a whole tile gym at the house and all that. At a house that had that here in Idaho. I was doing tile at a house recently, and I fucking was up in the upstairs garage, and I look out this window, and I'm like, oh, this, where does this look out to? It looks over a fucking basketball court, indoor basketball court in the garage, and then there was a fucking slide that went into the fucking basketball court. Yeah. Oh, and I was yeah, like, what the crazy. hell? And this is like some custom-built home that, like, was... I was really confused because I'd never seen anything like it. It was in a subdivision that had regular houses, so some guy had hired an entirely different home builder just so he could have this special house with... His RV garage, oh, yeah. his fucking indoor basketball court, his his probably Mormon family with like a bunch yeah. of kids there's or some, something. There's some sweet houses out here in, in Idaho too. So Trump says apparently this is supposed to come 
to an end after Easter, which is today. Right. Do you see that happening? No, I mean, not in certain... It just depends. I think state by state, too, like, the cases. Obviously, people are not traveling as much, doing as much. So it has to come to a point where the curve is, you know, like, a flat line at its worst. And that's right. what they were saying was supposed to come up. The peak is supposed to peak, you know, in the next week or so. And then, you know, we'll see. Well, the cases have been coming down, though, dude. I think we might have been through the peak already. Yeah, we'll see. You know, we could just see... I've just been keeping my faith and praying about it, you know, <laughs> making sure I'm healthy and Speaking good. Speaking of that, it is so, Easter Sunday yeah, today. Yeah, he like, has risen, so. He has, he has, man. That is, it's crazy, like, not going to church on Easter Sunday. Yeah. That's the weird, like, yeah, right now we could be doing an online sermon or something mm-hmm. like that, but, like, you know how many people aren't at church today? Yeah, millions of That's so millions crazy of to of think about. People. That is fucking nuts, mm-hmm. dude. That That's why I grew. I, I had to take a drive up towards Idaho City just to see the mountains and just right, appreciate, right. you know, like Visit just appreciate. Hopefully, you didn't yeah. bring your grandparents to Corona. That's a crazy fear right now, too. This morning, you went to visit your fucking grandparents, but like, there's some families that don't don't even let their fucking family come visit them right now. That it's like, no, yeah. like, no, 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 don't even fucking come by, don't yeah. come over, don't even touch me, you yeah. know, like, stay home, stay home, stay mm-hmm. home, and that's what's crazy, like. Well, they can disinfect where I sat. You know, they have they have a bunch right. of cleaners. <laughs> They'll be okay. <laughs> no, I'm, like, I'm really just hoping like that we're over the worst of this. Like, I, I, I personally can't stand the thought of spending any more beautiful days like this without mm-hmm. being at a concert, without being somewhere, without like, fucking this yeah. this is just genuinely shitty but it's also a really cool like chance to I think reflect. even I think even after this though it's going to be different like I think there's going to be limited amount of concerts sporting events are going to be limited for a while you know I mean it's going to be different even when it goes back to normal it's, it's going to be different So we are never ever ever going to live life the same way we did I feel Probably like. not no I feel there's going to be social so distancing many- is going to be a thing it's going to not be a hashtag anymore it's just gonna be kind of how strangers live you know i think like it's gonna be a new it's a, gonna be a new norm that people do yeah almost yeah it's not ne- that sucks dude like i i i had a couple other people so far it's been michael donescu it's been uh anna Wade, mm-hmm. and myself those are the three people in my social circle that i know are like the three of the biggest extroverts you'll ever meet like, right. i go i go out every not just every weekend i go out every night I just go to, to go to fucking do something. I'm like, whatever, dude. I'm just going to go fucking do something. I don't want to just sit out. I hate sitting at my house. Like, it's just... I have a nice house. It's fun to sleep at. Yeah. You know? I don't like to waste fucking time sitting here. Yeah. There's all kinds of other shit I could be doing. Yeah. I have a life to live. You know? I personally... as Along with Michael and Anna, they came on my show weeks ago. They were struggling weeks ago. Right now, I'm fucking even worse off than I was weeks ago. Like, how am I going to feel in more weeks? Yeah, I mean, that's why I just take advantage of nature. Like, you just got to get outside, you know, by yourself. Just be outside. Yeah, and you know, I, I'm That's social distancing in my, in my, like, view of what social distancing is. Like, you can be outside in nature, go on a run, go on or whatever. So, you know, um, to me, I don't, I don't think you're hurting anybody by just being outside. Yeah, you're not. And Breathing fresh air, I mean, it's not like, you know. If coronavirus is in the air like that, then everybody's going to just get it. Somebody yelled at me yesterday when I was walking down the street. Um, actually, right down this hill, I was walking down, and I had a mask on. Um, and I didn't still have the mask on because I was worried. I had the mask on uh, still because Home Depot is literally a hop, skip, and a jump from my back door. So I'm not going to fucking drive. And so I walked over to Home Depot, and I grabbed a couple things, and... I ended up grabbing a little more than I anticipated. And so both of my hands were full. <laughs> Put the water on. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> no water for anybody else. <laughs> no, fuck on, you, it's uh, my water. Young, on Young on Young Blood, young blood podcast. podcast. Only one person remains hydrated, <laughs> and that's myself. Um, no, and I'm fucking walking down there, dude, and I didn't have a free hand to take my mask off. And so I, don't, I didn't hear what the fuck this lady yelled at me or said some shit like, 
mask's not gonna do anything or some stupid fucking yeah. shit you know and I'm, I'm just walking down the street and I just stare at her and I'm like the fuck like you should have said well I'm sure hand sanitizer will though so I'm like alright fuck you Karen <laughs> like cause I asked what you had to say you know? yeah. some old fat weight lady too and I just didn't, yeah, I, honest to god didn't hear what the fuck she said but she yelled at me I'm like what the the fuck are you yelling at How me How many for? times are you going to run into your microphone? I'm probably going to hit my microphone <laughs> a fuckload of times because you know why, DeAndre? I can't <laughs> talk with my hands as fucking much. <laughs> so I'm going to hit something around a little bit. You know, in honor of Italy too, man. I'm I'm not going to stop speaking with my fucking hands. <laughs> it's a little hard. Forget about it. But dude, I'll, I'm... Fuck! Did it again. I think the secret is maybe putting my hat backwards, but then it, my whole persona here that I'm trying to go for with the L.A. hat and all that would be pointless. <laughs> DeAndre, we've been, we have been friends now for too fucking many years. The first day I met you was high school capital fucking, what was it, Ingalls class? We, we were uh, the two odd one's out. We were the two kids from fucking out of state in that class. Mm-hmm. Who was our other friend? Did we have one other friend in that class that we were friends with, or is it just me and you who hated that one teacher? Angle was an interesting fucking What was teacher. her name in that class? Margie or something? Or, or what was her the name? The blonde chick who sat behind us? No. The brunette girl. What was her name? Bro. That's Margie, I'm pretty sure. What about her? That's who the other person that was... That was from out my of state? F- no. The, oh. I was just saying that was in that class that I talked to. There's two people that I had interesting interactions with when it comes down to math class and meeting them in high school. It was you and the other one was John Massey. When I met you, I instantly clicked with you because I was like, oh, do you mean this guy fucking out of state friends? You know, this is cool. And when I met John Massey, we literally almost threw fucking hands within the first 10 seconds from meeting Yeah, other. that's like, how I mean, like, <laughs> literally, like... That's how you meet a lot of your best friends growing up as oh, a boy, right? as a dude, and or whatever, yeah. Dude, he literally, it was fucking ridiculous, too, because, like, I'm not the kind of kid who's like, I'm not going to throw hands with you in class, because, like, for one, I'm the new kid, and I don't want to get kicked out of school on the mm-hmm. first day, and for two, I'm going to fuck you up outside. Like, <laughs> like you yeah. know? I'm smart enough. Like, I want to... I know I'm going to win this fucking fight, so I'm going to do it where I can fucking fight you, you know? I get yeah. a couple... Get a couple shots in before we get pulled apart you know and and this kid's all trying to fight me in the middle of the fucking classroom and i'm like welcome to idaho i guess holy fucking shit redneck ass motherfuckers out here but yeah fuck i don't know it's different out here because when i in illinois even in the suburbs like people really didn't say like oh i'm gonna fuck you up or whatever it was just kind of happened i saw more fights in the suburbs between girls too like than anything like just in the hallway or whatever every day <laughs> the same school my little brother goes to he, he's like i see fights all the time and out here people just say it, that you never see a fight there wasn't a lot of fights i probably saw three fights yeah my whole senior year and i was just like there was that's good that's there was good. more fights in you my get you get you get suspended and all that of junior high than in my entire exactly. high school yeah. career living in idaho like exactly. in sixth fucking grade in california i saw more fights in sixth grade Mm-hmm. Than in the entire high school career that I had here, which was only it was only fucking what two or three years, but mm-hmm. in three years I saw two fights, maybe one, and in one year I saw fucking I was in like three. <laughs> yeah, I don't know <laughs> if know? I even I don't even know if at uh, Capital I even remember seeing anybody fight. It was so it long ago. We're damn near. pretty laid back. We're damn near. Um, in our 10 year reunion that's fucking disgusting don't ever say that again I think this would be 8 or this would be 7 that's disgusting I, we are not 10 seven. years out of high school yet no, oh no, my yet. god 7 definitely 7 oh my god we are fucking old dude when did we hit our <sighs> Should I, feel, when... I feel young though like 25 I feel like is the best I ever felt I, like, as soon I, as I turned 25, I was like, this feels like, I don't know, you finally feel confident. I mean, feel, I spent my 25th you know, birthday recovering from a car accident, so I was kind of yeah, like, yeah. Eh, reflection time. I, f- I felt reflection a little old. Time. <laughs> I felt a little old. I was right. rocking around with a cane. I was like, okay, it's not my prime anymore. <laughs> it kind of set in on that birthday, that's for sure. Um, but, I mean... If you look at it that way on your end, like that's 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 something that everybody can take something from because I personally don't look at it like that. I'm more half class empty. I'm twenty five. Fuck, 
I need. I'm at my quarter life crisis. I gotta go buy a motorcycle. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, that's where yeah. I'm at. And you're over here like, fuck, dude. I'm top of the world. No, you I know? feel. I just feel like it's like, not like I figured everything out, but definitely like I'm just like growing, trying to learn and trying to grow, and just you know, it's, right. it's a cool time to like better myself. And I don't know. It's, it's an interesting time for everything. Yeah, I mean, coronavirus obviously is like a weird, like, oh shit, slap in the face, but I mean, as far as, besides that, trying to stay positive is all we can really do, right? I, fuck, it's gonna get hard, but yes, like, it, it especially staying positive right now is something that can be easily achieved as if we do it together versus doing it solo, yeah, social distancing. We've got FaceTime, we've got phones, oh, yeah. we've got, we've still got each other. One thing that I've noticed, too, that girls don't have that guys fucking do. Some girls have this, but not a lot of them. Gaming. Fucking gaming. Yeah. Dude, that is a circle, bro. When you Girl, can get on. Women, women game? I mean, but I not think, like I the think, boys, bro. You know, uh, when the, when the know. fucking boys you're gonna hop piss, on. You're going to piss some people off. Ah, it's gonna, fucking fine. I'm not That's my speak job. on it like that. <laughs> That's fucking fine. Dude. I have noticed, like, and I acknowledged it, there's some girls out there that, yeah, maybe they got a crew of, like, three fucking girls, but fuck you. We all grew up with fucking yeah, 19 homies who thing. all got on right after school. Like, that's our fucking thing. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm not being sexist. You call it what you want. Yeah, if no, you're, you're growing, you're, you do that. Yeah, you're I fucking, yeah. I love it. Fuck yeah. Keep doing it. I hope there's more of you. I'm not being sexist. I'm being real. It's fucking cool, dude. We literally have this social circle that not everybody can be a part of and like i i realized it the other day too because i personally don't do that all the time mm -hmm. you know so it took me actually like getting into a party with fucking shane with shane dakota and fucking uh i think it was seth all homies from high school that i haven't talked mm -hmm. to in like a year dude and i just hopped in on this party with them and we got in a four-way group chat and played like four games of fucking call of duty you know and it's the new uh the new call of duty that they revised it with the uh fucking uh, mm -hmm. battle royale right yeah oh dude best battle royale i have played i'm not a big battle royale guy like i'm just not a big gamer in general this one's pretty fucking fun you know especially like my favorite aspect of it is like when you can uh when when one of your homies dies and all of you are dead and you can watch your homie in the gulag get fucked up because like if you die you get a chance to come back in on a 1v1 with another player. So you get 1v1, and if you kill the other player, you come back into the game. Oh, okay. And I haven't even downloaded it. Yeah, I've been and there's, and there's on instances. I've been sleep on gaming. <laughs> yeah, and there's instances where, like, all your homies will, like, will be literally watching you. Like, in Search and Destroy. Did you ever play Search and Destroy back in the day on Xbox? Mm, well, I, I always just played hardcore team deathmatch. Like, um, literally, that was my only game. If you that ever played, played like, like, in a party with a bunch and of people zombies. back in the day, Search and Destroy was, like, that one game. Like, if you're a pretty serious game, or mm -hmm. when you play League and shit, like, a lot of people fuck with Search and Destroy because it's very tactical. You know, it's 4v4, you get one fucking life. It's it's like Battle Royale. You all drop in the map, right. 4v4, and then there's a bomb. One team is responsible for defending the bomb. The other team is def uh, responsible for arming the bomb. So they have to get the fucking device, drop the device, and arm it, and the other team has a certain amount of time to d disarm it. And if they don't disarm it, you kill all of them, you win, right? Mm -hmm. You go a few rounds, do all this shit. Long story short, oh, I'm an asshole. You you turned your phone off and I didn't. Oh, yes, sir. I am so sorry, dude. Oh, <laughs> my God. I didn't even... And he answered it. And he answered it. And he answered it. <laughs> hey, Jen, I'm actually in the middle of doing a podcast with DeAndre. Can I call you right back? Oh, yeah, sorry. Love sorry. you. Bye, my little niece. Anyways, <laughs> sorry about that. Um, where was I? I don't even. We're talking about gaming. Oh right. Oh yeah. So back to where I was. So with Search and Destroy, it's very uh, opportunistic for somebody to get put on blast. Mm -hmm. You know, there's lots of opportunities for you to have to clutch the game because you're the last one left and. Needless to say, there's often times where somebody will drop the ball and you get to talk shit on them. Right. So it's a lot of fucking fun. It puts mm -hmm. people in pretty funny positions yeah, where no, you yeah, really yeah. know who's a shitty gamer out of your friends. You right. Know, you're right. like, oh, fuck, Billy's the last one alive. Fuck, what are we going to do? Billy's got the bomb. <laughs> fucking Billy. Right. You know, and then there's those sometimes where Billy pulls fucking through and actually wins, you know, and everybody in the party's like, ah! 
the long story short, we have that camaraderie that girls don't. That shit's fucking cool. Like I we can know. get to, we can get online, dude. What fucking girls do you know right now? We could end it on we could end it on that note because we're gonna get in trouble and I'm just playing. Oh. I know girls that game though for real. I'm not even I'm not even just trying to argue or whatever. I know a lot of I know I can name off the top of my head like four or five girls that honestly they fuck with Call of Duty or yeah, or uh, not really 2K like that, but like definitely the shooting games or like. Yeah. Like, back in the day, a lot of girls used to play, like, Sims and, like, Grand Theft Auto has yeah. always been. But I'm for sure, saying the but fact for that sure you're it. right. You're right. Like, more, it's more of a guy thing growing up, but, like, girls, Nowadays it's different, yes. Girls definitely are into that world, definitely. No, I'm definitely. just saying, like, like, Saturday night with the boys still seems like, still seems like Saturday night with the boys. On Xbox Live Party. Or, yeah. if, well, also, one thing I do have to fucking point out that's really cool about um, Call of Duty is they made it cross-platform. So, yeah. every... Sp- I've been playing Call of Duty with homies I haven't played oh, yeah. games and since people high school. Are, people are playing Fortnite again, like... Well, so yeah, <laughs> it's just... It's one of those things, like, I personally, like, if I, I grew up on PlayStation... I know a lot of my friends grew up on PlayStation. Mm-hmm. I know a lot of my friends who don't fuck with Xbox. I just ended up with an Xbox. I don't really give a fuck enough to go sell my Xbox to switch it for a PlayStation or to go... I don't care. Xbox is Xbox. PlayStation is PlayStation. And I don't have the same fucking games. I don't game enough to give a shit. Anyways, Xbox, to me, it sucks because of the fact that you can only play with other people who have Xbox. Call of Duty opened up the, the gaming realm by finally saying, you know what, fuck that. Like, let's... Well, I guess Fortnite was the original one to do that. To do a battle royale. No, to do the cross platform on battle right. royale. But yeah. you know, but Call of Duty really like took it to the next step. You right. know, and like brought back the nostalgia of playing video games with your homies, which is a big the big fucking thing. Which, you know, I guess we can end it off at fucking that. Is there anything like else that you wanna throw in on this? Like you wanna talk you wanna Throw me your Instagram handle real quick. Where, where can we find it? Where can we follow you? Yeah, you can go on Instagram. It's at Summit Woods. So Summit, like the top of a mountain, and then mm-hmm. just Woods. So Summit Woods on Instagram. And that's for your that's for your shoe game. That's shoe for your... needs, sometimes clothing needs. I have a lot of vintage gear on there, too. I dabble into that. So Sorry, guys. I live right next to a busy road. So, yeah. yeah. Summit Woods on IG. On Instagram, is there anything else you want to throw in about this coronavirus? You know, not at all. Are I just appreciate you having me on the show, and happy <laughs> Easter to everybody. Right on. All right, well, fuck, dude. This is DeAndre Woods. This is episode number seven of Young Blood Podcast, guys. Remember, I have done a lot of work to get us on all these platforms. I am on Spotify. I am on Apple Podcasts. Not on Apple Music. People get that confused. It's on Apple Podcasts. It's a completely different app. Don't get them confused. Check it out. It's all one word, too. So when you search it, Young Blood Podcast. And podcast is in there, too. So Y-O-U-N-G-B-L-O-O-D-P-O-D-C-A-S-T. Like, all one fucking word, that whole thing. So don't come at me like I couldn't fucking find it. It's there. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's there. I've been told, like, by three people already. Like, oh, I can't fucking find it. It's one fucking word. Okay? One word. Young Blood Podcast. And if you did actually listen to this podcast... Thanks for being here. Thanks for checking in. To my five fucking followers who do actually listen on the regular. Thanks again. Um, again, check out Cassidy Neighbors Colarin. Right? I think so, yeah. It's Colarin. I don't know this. Cassidy exactly. Neighbors Colarin. Yeah. She did my album artwork. She's awesome. She also actually did the fucking shit at DeAndre's work. So there's that. Um, and this has been episode seven, guys. Thanks for checking in. It's another episode.